Hey everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, I have a major headache. I'm coming down with, I think, the flu. I'm not feeling too good. I'm gonna make this video as short and simple as possible. Please forward this video to as many people as, as you can. I know that a lot of you know the concerns in these videos and you know how to address these concerns, but there's a lot of people out there, security, that need your guidance, they need your help, so please share these videos with them. In today's video, I wanna talk about your holsters that are attached to your your carrier. So early in the day, I was looking at different security videos and there's there's this organization, I think they're in, based out of Colorado, and it looked like the commander has a holster that's attached to his carrier, just something something like this. And I don't believe that there's, that there's a level two retention. There could be, there could be. If this is a Serpa holster, there might be a release mechanism that would create a level two situation. Um, I don't think it's a level three holster, but it's either level one or level two. Anyhow, it's in the front of the vest. I don't think that this is the best idea. Now, oh, by the way, before I get slapped by the YouTube algorithm boss, this is not a real gun. This is a, this is a paintball, yeah, paintball pistol. Doesn't even shoot anything anything other than paintballs. So he has it attached to here. The issue is that if you're on the ground fighting with somebody, you're less capable of taking this gun out because it's attached very closely to you. So if you're on the ground fighting wrestling around with somebody, their body might get trapped between you and the gun. So this would be them and you're fighting like this. It might be very difficult to take this out of the holster in that position. And then if you're able to take it out, now you're in a close quarter combat situation. All that person has to do really is just push the slide back. If this is a semi-automatic pistol, okay, push the slide back a little bit. Okay, now this now it's out of battery, okay, and the gun will not fire. So that's all it takes from this this position. Normally, this would be ideal if Maybe if you're in a military operation and your pistol is your secondary weapon, I could see the utility in that. Um, and it looks like some, there's quite a bit of military units that are going away from that. It looks like that they're starting to go more towards the, maybe the drop, day, drop leg holster or the holster on the, on the hip situation. I'm not seeing too much of this. I don't know, I'm not in the military. You guys that are currently in the military, I, do they allow you guys to wear chest holsters? Just something to think about. Now, when it's on your hip, okay, you're gonna have more clearance. So if you're on the ground fighting with somebody or you need to back that person, back that person up, okay, it's a lot easier. You can use this hand and your gun is actually, it's on your strong side if you're left-handed or wrong-handed. Just kidding, guys. Sorry, my, my head is pounding. Um, you create that distance. But the gun's here, the gun's not here. And also when it's up here, you're giving your adversary a position advantage because all that person has to do is just reach over here. Okay, right in front of you. It's right here. I also realized that some of you are pretty heavy. If that's the case, then maybe a chest holster might do the trick for you. But also try to consider just wearing a drop leg holster. The drop leg holster would most likely be lower than all of your, your flabbiness that you have, and you might be able to draw a lot faster. So if, you, if you're thinking, hey, I weigh too much, there's too much fat here, um, it's gonna block this a smooth draw, maybe, maybe consider putting it here. But if you're able to put it on a drop leg holster setup, then hey, that might, that might work a lot better as well. Okay, just something to consider, guys.